live from Seattle, Washington. It's the Cube on the ground, covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here at the KubeCon Cloud Native Conference, now run by the Cloud Native Foundation, Computing Foundation, CNCF, and I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. This is a special on the ground. We have two uh, influencers here on a segment. We're going to just talk about the impact of community and the impact of what's going on with Cloud Native, specifically KubeCon, and uh, in general, open source as it evolves, the ecosystem and community has been and always will be uh, continued a big part of the innovation uh, just the innovation growth of, of our future. So we have um, Joseph Jacks, who was the founder of KubeCon, now handed it off to the foundation to scale it up. Congratulations, welcome back. Thanks. And uh, Jim Walker, a uh, friend, and formerly at Hortonworks, before that in the community as well, now with Coral West. Uh, good to see you guys. That's and, what, the, and that's this, what the shirt says, yeah. <laughs> Core OS. Yeah, so you, you know a little bit about what's going on. So as you're back in tech, you took a little hiatus into marketing tech. Yeah, MarTech. Is that like the, 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 you know, Hawaii, it was in like the tech another business. World. It was another you go out, world, sit on the yeah. beach for a little bit, and mm -hmm. talk about predictive Hard analytics. Beach, but it was still, it was a different game. It's just so easy. Just say predictive analytics, <laughs> we're prescriptive, and you know, we use big data. Nothing's easy. <laughs> well, anyway, so back to this show. So congratulations on a great event. And um, this is really, in my opinion, something that you put together on, on the fly, you know? Kind of reminds me of Linux Torvald when he said, hey, I'm just going to start a project, and I'm humble about it. You kind of, same approach put a group together last year, and then it grew really fast. Talk about what happened last year and then compare and contrast your event uh, to what happened this year. Yeah, so I've been sort of honored to be involved with Kubernetes uh, from from almost the very beginning. I was uh, sort of f following the project as it uh, as it got announced and um, you know, super excited and just to sort of see the project grow within the first sort of six to nine months. You could, you could tell there was something really special about the technology and that you know the the community was really genuine. There was a, a, a really high quality of, of uh, focus around just the overall um, release cadence and the and the features and just like the the overall. So people were pumped, but yeah, how many people execution. were at the event? How many people were at the event? Yeah, the first the first conference we had 550, 550 560 people uh, pulled it together. Like you said, sort of on, like a uh, meetup, right? Yeah, it was sort of like you know let's just do a big meetup and call it KubeCon and ended up being like you know we had. 35 corporate sponsors, lots of multinational companies, you have VMware, Red Hat, you know, uh, Meta, Meta, MetaSwitch, ma you know, major companies kind of uh, came came behind, you know, Google and Red Hat, and yeah. just uh, just an amazing um, turning point, I think, really for Kubernetes because it was really the project um, maturing and growing into a real, uh, you know, a real ecosystem. And then this event here is thousands of people. I don't know what the number is. I yeah, we, we you know, 1,500 people with the waiting list. Um, you know, we had capacity capacity planning issues. We could have, I think we could have had 2,000 people here. Yeah, it's fire marshal. Uh, we'll have several thousand next year. So. <laughs> and if the connectivity is on demand, we're going to put it yeah, on the internet as well. Yeah, that's exciting though. So it's a spark. that You did the spark and what, you know, Jim, we were talking in the hallways with some others about, you know, you see these sparks happen pretty rarely, you know. You see foundations get cobbled together when there's movement. But when something moves this fast, it gets your attention. Yeah. Your thoughts on, on yeah, what this all you means. Yeah, know, you know, what I saw in Kubernetes really last year and talking to Joseph around the time that, that KubeCon started last year, um, a very similar community to what I saw in 2010 with the Hadoop community. Uh, and you were around through that yeah. through that whole game as well, John. And so just, just like rabid attention to the space. Uh, and a group of people who, this time around is different though, because I think- uh, uh, Google didn't give away MapReduce. They gave away MapReduce no, I mean, to Cloudera. They, they didn't Yahoo. give away Kubernetes to- It was kind of Yahoo started it, right? So it was a little uh, bit of a similar kind of heritage there, but- I think I, Google had first dibs on it and kind of let it kind of slide yeah, up. I guess true, yeah, right, you exactly. Know. It's all Google <laughs> exhaust after all. Um, you know, it, it's different this time though, because I, the, the, this community is is much more vibrant and and, Prolific, uh, you know the people that are involved and in, and in across a broad set of companies. Um, it's just it's it's just a different game. It's and a it's bigger a, population of people who are on it. At Big Data, you had a unique, you know, I would say VMware kind of culture. You had you know the Mike Olsons, Amar Awadala, people who knew web scale mm -hmm. and hyperscale and that old web scale trend. Now it's just all developers get Kubernetes. Well, it's, it's a, a little bit, and it's a little bit of an age thing too because I think you know everybody you know. I always like to say, you know, the people that graduated after the year 2000, open source is native to them. Like that's what they think of, yeah. and those are the people that are really driving this now. And so now it's it's not it's not even like there's nobody left that even questioned open source. 
Yeah. You know, and that's what we had last time. This time, it's fully open source, and it's like yeah. pedal to the metal. It's an industry. It's a it's a, it's, I think it's an industry reshaping, and I, I'll give you an example. So Brendan Burns was on earlier with Ross Gartler, and I asked. And I'm an old timer, so I know of all the history of all the proprietary approaches. You know, one of them was Microsoft, and you know they had their own little thing, software business, great ecosystem. And so those guys, I asked them the question. The elephant in the room is, you know, are you just trying to get people on Azure Stack? It's coming out, with a <laughs> lock in like Oracle. These kinds of older companies have a playbook. And they were very candid and said, no one will tolerate lock-in in this new market. So to your point, Jim. Right. That, that's gone. So that's gone. So if there's no lock-in, that means there's no proprietary strategy relative to proprietary software. Okay, I believe that to be true. Now if you buy that, you go, okay, what's the competitive advantage? And to me, I want to get your thoughts on this because it's a community uh, discussion. It seems to me that if you look at Amazon Web Services, their competitive advantage is speed and code pushing. They push so much code and they have a flywheel of leverage that people can leverage with the code. So the alternative is to do it yourself. And there's no way you can get the efficiencies of what they're producing. So that is essentially the same dynamic in a community model. The idea, do you agree with that idea? I totally agree with that. I mean, I think what we're seeing, and this is a, a conversation that, that, that CoreOS and Google and others have been sort of um, getting people to think about more is there's sort of a, a, a really beautiful analogy of Kubernetes being sort of the Linux kernel for distributed systems, or you can think of it as another way of sort of looking at it is it's like a POSIX for distributed systems. And if you just take Linux as an example, there was just this Cambrian explosion of distributions as Linux started to stabilize and as the software became more reliable and permeated, vendors came in and started to sort of package the system. We're going to see the same thing happen with Kubernetes. We're starting to see major multinationals invest in the technology, yeah. sort of provide their own distributed uh, approach around packaging and integration with different tools. We're seeing Canonical and VMware and Google and a bunch of companies actually, you know, Red Hat, they've started to invest serious engineering dollars in stabilizing the, the, the code base. So I think the same thing, or you asked the question around differentiation. The differentiation with Kubernetes is really around, you know, there's enter like real enterprises starting to use this in production with Ticketmaster. They're running a $25 billion e-commerce. Yeah, we e hope to have them come on, but that's great. Yeah, they're an Amazon yeah. customer. $25 billion e-commerce business, they're running that on Kubernetes, and they're moving that on Amazon. onto Amazon, shutting oh, they're down on, multiple are they data on centers. Amazon or are they moving to Amazon? They're moving, they're moving onto Amazon, they're shutting down multiple data centers, and Kubernetes is their layer of indirection for applications and, yeah. and Amazon locking. Yeah, it sounds like critical infrastructure yeah, to me. Yeah, exactly. So how do, you, how do you package and stabilize an open Displacing source Displacing other critical infrastructure from old guys. Yeah, in a big way. And, and you know, stabilizing Kubernetes, making it consumable for enterprises, I, th I think where the different differentiation comes, and there's going to be a lot of companies. That's important for end users. We need to collaborate. We need to you know, drive a lot okay. of value there. So, so I want to, that's kind just of I, that, I buy that, but I want to go to Jim because I'm going to play the skeptic. Sure. You know what? I totally hear what you're saying, but that's BS because in big data, they promised me the same things in 2010. <laughs> you know, Cloudera was the only guys, they took the MapReduce paper from Google, Yahoo's guys who were commercializing sure. it, and then Hortonworks came out from Yahoo, then you had a two horse race. EMC and Pivotal all came in. So what happened? What what happened in big data is different that wouldn't happen here. It was it was first of all I think it was a different group of people and I think honestly this time around I think open source and what's happening with Kubernetes in particular is a response to basically the cloud providers setting up these shops and saying okay I'm going to have services and 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 servers underneath that and you're you're kind of in Amazon at some point, right? Or so the you're within one spec. of the providers, right? The kind of the locket is kind of there. And so if you look at what Kubernetes is doing to this community, it kind of opens it up, John. And so I think it's it's almost like a response to that to actually let's let's open this up yet again. And so uh, in I, a lightweight way, way that doesn't provide lock-in, because with the idea exactly. of Kubernetes is you can move across resources, and it fuels the entire movement to happen. You know, I mean, it starts in cloud native, but what happens when all the legacy apps start to turn into this new world? And so, yeah. you know, cloud native has started in the open source world, and so I, I just I really believe it's it's it was a natural progression. We've talked about so you this think this before, is a different, but it's, it's different scenario right now. I think it's a completely different scenario. I think you know we're built off an open source you know project and there's a community. I, I feel that this community is extremely yeah. vibrant and and really very very open. It's a it's a complete and total meritocracy. Just a final word on on this segment community. What's going to be one of going the things on? I think that makes Kubernetes stand out is exactly what Jim just said. It's it's a, t a totally distributed structure for governance. <laughs> Google recognized very early on that 
this kind of level scale project that would that would transform an industry that would that would sort of take the SOA integration industry to new new levels, twenty thirty billion dollar industry couldn't be run by a single benevolent dictator. So they donated right. it to CNCF, and now we're seeing a major distribution of contributions and evolution. Yeah. Red Hat, CoreOS, Apprenda, and we had Dan Microsoft. on earlier. He clarified there's a business segmentation uh, with technical, right? And that's key because you don't want to go mingle right. the business model. Great, guys, thanks so much for sharing the community perspective. Sure. Great to see, and congratulations for being the founder of KubeCon, which is now turned into the cloud native uh, con conference. KubeCon, yep. KubeCon. And way. we hope to be at all the next KubeCon in, in Berlin. Thanks for having us, Great, thanks, uh, John. Great, thanks for much. You're watching theCUBE on the ground here in uh, Seattle. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Ah.